Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman. Back here, of course, once again, with some more geography. Now we're on to Slovenia. Woo! Uh, I'm not going to say make the same mistake I made last video and assume stuff, which is normally why I don't do it, because then it causes controversy. So we're going to jump into this and check out this awesome country and see what it's all about. So let's do it, guys. Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button below. Please and thank you, and yeah, let's do it. Dun -dun. Actually, a big deal in Sylvania. It's a big deal. A long time ago, one of you guys sent me this shirt. I made it into a gym shirt, and uh, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'm a big deal in Slovenia. Nah, but for real. Slovenia, our last <laughs> and final Balkan country. Well, actually, the Thracian Peninsula that connects to- Oh my god, can you please just let me have this one f***ing moment? No, but for real. If there was ever a country that could fit nowhere, yet everywhere, all at once, it would probably be Slovenia. Welcome to the Switzerland of the Balkans. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Alright, I'm gonna change this shirt. Oh, what's this? Yes, you can get a Geography Now shirt at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's my merch. Anyway, hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Well, we've said this many times before, but if the Balkans were family, it would kind of be like... <laughs> Jiggly. Ooh, jiggly. <laughs> Slovenia, come join us! Hey! Oh, oh, what? Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with this wine. Okay. Uh, wie auch immer. Uh, ich habe Dorf besucht und... What the f***? Do German wannabe? <laughs> German wannabe. You're a fake. Wow. Ich habe ein anderes Haus gekauft und... Yeah, Slovenia kind of has a whole other thing going on in the Slavic world. Let's find it on the globe now, shall we? <laughs> So, in Europe, Slovenia is one of the lesser known nations that doesn't get as much relative spotlight on the international stage. True. They definitely know how to hold their ground as a country and function efficiently though, mostly. I mean, there may be a few demarcation controversies, which will be explained in the motion graphic. For one, Slovenia, which by the way looks like a screaming chicken, is located right at the crossroads of the Balkan Peninsula, South Europe, and Central Europe, bordered by four other countries, Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia. In the west, they have a small 29 mile or 47 kilometer long coast with the Adriatic. It could have been longer if Italy hadn't totally swooped in and grabbed this town, Trieste, which Slovenia kind of claims used to be theirs a long time ago, but that's another story. This also creates a weird triangle-shaped maritime dispute with Croatia on the Gulf of Piran. The issue was actually brought to the International Court of Justice in The Hague. And today, based on that durnov shek rachan agreement, the boundaries look like this and give Slovenia a very small 16-kilometer-long, 2.5-nautical-mile-wide corridor to the international waters known as the Junction Area. But that's not all. Along okay. the border, Slovenia still claims the left bank of the St. Odoric Canal, built centuries ago, extending about 7 kilometers inland. This thin slice at the narrowest, only about 24 meters wide, has crop fields with a few buildings and even a casino that is de facto run by Croatia, but Slovenia is like, eh, come on, it's ours. In fact, much of the border confusion is just with Croatia, mostly along the historical river boundaries that shifted, so everything is a mess. You go to the end of the beak at the tri-point with Croatia and Hungary, you can clearly see the scrambled mess on the Mur and Big Kra rivers with narrowly attached amorphous blocks. Every, every time I see that, it makes me think, you know, the the borders are just like big jagged edges and stuff like that. Like the people in those in those areas got to pick what country they want to be part of. Like they were on the border and they got got to decide like, oh, I want to be Croatian. I want to be Slovenian. Yeah, I'll pick this one. And so it, it's like that because, you know, everyone obviously didn't pick the same country. But anyways, yeah. Land. Head south and you find the Brezovica pro Metliki dispute with arbitrarily drawn lines between them and Croatia, established around World War II. Anyway, the capital and largest city is Ljubljana, meaning the loved one, located in the central west part of the country. From there, the secondary subdivision of the country is, I kid you not, 212 municipalities, 11 of which are classified as urban municipalities, meaning they have over 20,000 people and are economic and cultural centers of their regions. To make things a little easier though, the country is also divided into 12 statistical regions for the purpose of data collecting. These regions, though, have no official administrative function in themselves. Ljubljana, of course, has the largest and busiest airport, Joje Pucnik International, where most people fly into when visiting. From there, only two other international airports exist, one in the second largest city, Maribor, which can be found about 100 kilometers northeast, and the third in Portoroz, on the coast of the Adriatic, whose IATA code is POW. Speaking of the coast, the largest and busiest seaport is located at Koper, where the vast majority of cargo is transported. From there, an extensive network of 
roads connect every municipality, including the longest one, the A1 highway that starts on the coast and ends in Austria. And just like the highways, the country has a network of state-owned rail lines that more or less parallel the same roads and highways along them. Yeah, countries with borders on shifting riverbeds always end up in what I like to call the Balkan dilemma. Quick side note though, if you ask Slovenians how they might divide their country apart from, you know, 212 municipalities, they might refer to the seven traditional regions. People uh. still disagree on what actual boundaries are for these regions, but it kind of maybe more or less looks like this. And each of them have their own stereotypes or regional culture. If you are Slovenian, feel free to write down in the comments how you would describe each traditional region. I don't know, I heard like Primorska are like the talkative temperamental people and like Styria is like the happy drunk Austrian influenced people. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? In any case, when you come and look at Slovenia, you'll notice that within this small country, there's like a profusion of fusion. Nowhere else in the world can you really get a country that mixes all three of the largest ethno-linguistic people groups of Europe, the Slavs, the Germanic, and the Latin. Which brings us to mm. the notable places section. Some of the top notable sites of Slovenia might include Ljubljana Castle and the Dragon Bridge, the Autonomous cool. Metalkova Art Center, the prehistoric cool. pile dwellings of Ljubljana Moor, the wine yeah. regions, especially in Vipavo, the Honey Cookie Museum, the mm. Planita Ski Jump, the traditional herdsman huts of Velika Planina, and there are too many castles, 500 to 1,000 castles throughout the country, depending on what you consider a castle. There's even one in a- Man, I love castles, man. They should do like a segment, just like, I don't know, like geography, and just do it just on castles, just uh, spend like a minute on each castle, uh, just telling you like history about them or something like that. I don't know how many castles are in the world, so maybe that might take a while, but even though it'd be cool, the longer the better. But like that, it's built into a side of a wall, apparently, inside of a mountain or something. That is cool. Let's see here. Come on, man. Castles are just so cool, man. I don't know. I can like. Let's look at castles and just like, I don't know. There are too many castles, 500 to 1,000 castles throughout the country, depending on what you consider a castle. There's even one in a cave, and there are over 2,500 historic churches. The most famous one, and the one you'll probably see on a lot of postcards, Lake Bled Island Church. It's the only natural island in the country, and tradition says that the groom has to carry the bride all the way up all 99 steps. Well, I just had hip surgery, babe, so change of plans. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's all surrounded. Huh. Surrounded by beautiful waters and mountains. And speaking of lands. Okay. And in that church, uh, does everyone just take a boat there? Or because I see there's like a few other buildings on there. Or it's just like a church that has like the top capacity is like 10 people or something. Like how do people get there? I'm assuming by boat, but or maybe it's just maybe it's not really a popular church. It's just kind of like a, you know, it's just like a, like a monument. It doesn't really get used. I don't know, or unless it's just special occasions or something. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And it's all surrounded by beautiful waters and mountains. And speaking of beautiful. landscape, it's time to move on to... It's often said that Slovenia is the sunny side of the Alps. They have so much going on that even parts of the Chronicles of Narnia were filmed here. Lots cool. of stuff to cover. So here we go. First of all, the country is located right in the transition zone between the Alps and the Dinaric Alps that extend into the Balkan Peninsula. The country is predominantly hilly or mountainous with about 90% of the surface resting on at least 200 meters above sea level. At nearly 62%, it is also the third most forested country by percentage of land area in Europe after Finland and Sweden. From there, there are three main subsections of the Alps in the northern part of Slovenia. The Pohorje, the Kamnik Savinja, and the largest ones, the Julian Alps. In the Julians, mm. you can find the tallest mountain Triglav, known for its majestic triple peaks, as depicted on the coat of arms. And just below, nestled within these ridges, is the largest natural lake of the country, Bohin. Just above this, you'll find the longest river. Just above all this, you'll find the longest river that flows through the country, the Sava, which flows southeast for about 615 miles, ending in Croatia. A branch of the Sava, the Ljubljanica, goes through the capital, and it's a very important river. From there, you have the smaller highlands like the Nanos and Dinaric Mountains, in the southwest, the Sava and Slovene hills in the center and east, which lead to the flattest part of the country, the Pannonian Basin in the far east. As a country sitting not far from some major fault lines like the Dinaric Alps, the country has a few tectonic fissures like the Rasha and Divacha fault lines. These fault lines are partially responsible for making the entire western part of Slovenia a karst zone. The word even originated from Slovenia, meaning a landscape underlain by eroded and dissolved limestone, creating landforms like ridges, towers, sinkholes, and caves. In fact, oh. there are over 10,000 registered caves and many new ones are discovered annually. The longest Great. known system in the country being the Migovets in the northwest, also part of the Triglav National Park, with about 42,000 meters of tunnel explored. The second longest one... I've been to a few caves, and they're really cool, but I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm always also scared of caves, because I'm always thinking that 
it, I don't know, like there's mining accidents where you're just going to get stuck down there. Anyone else kind of have that thing where you don't really want to go in a cave? I don't really want to, but, you know, if I'm with people and they want to go, then I kind of go. But not really my thing, but they are really cool. Cuando Cuando estoy, no? is way more popular and commercialized as it was the first cave system to have electric lighting in the world in 1884 nice. and even a train system built for tourists back in 1872. Yeah, no joke. Whether it's the green surface of the Logarska Dolina Glacial Valley or the green underground river labyrinths of Postonia, Slovenia's landscape is absolutely speckled with picturesque sights. I'm more of a Blaski Vinkar type of guy, but yeah, sure. Oh, and forgot to mention, all these fault lines are also factors that create the copious amounts of thermal springs in the south and eastern parts of the country. The largest ones being the Chatej, Chatej Thermal Spa near Croatia. I think I got that, I don't know. So you get the yeah. mountain experience, the alpine experience, the cave experience, and even a few coastal beaches and thermal spas. Woohoo, it's like a quintuple package. Okay, I would go in the cave if I could go on that train, because that looks really cool and fun. And that castle just looks amazing. Alpine experience, the cave experience, and even a few coastal beaches and thermal spas. Woohoo! It's like a quintuple Woo. package deal. Granted, they do have a lot of overcast skies and rainy days year round, but that's besides the point. Pretty good deal. And speaking of good deals, usually Noah comes in to finish off this segment, but he's visiting family during the season. So let's see, as a Slavic nation, why don't we have our favorite resident Slav, Ivan, come in to fill in for this time. Zdravo, zdravo, zdravo. What's up, Ivan? I'm here, baby. How you doing? You I actually didn't even leave, to be honest. I'm ready. If you look at the way Slovenia operates, they have quite a success story when it comes to managing the relationship between environment and economy. In fact, the EU anointed Slovenia's capital as the greenest capital in Europe after achieving 96 out of 100 detailed sustainability indicators. Wow. They have become one of the fastest developing nations in Europe and enjoy a high level of prosperity and stability in contrast to other countries. Even though they only made about 11% of the population I just, I just want to say that, like, I like how, like, I want to say, like, countries over in the Baltics and Europe and stuff like that, you know, uh, how, I guess, how their towns and cities are, like, they're not just, uh, like, in the Americas, whatever, you know, Canada, America, Mexico, whatever, well, I don't know about Mexico, but anyway, it's all, like, uh, blocks you know it's so boring going to a city because it's all just blocks there's no character to the cities you know around here uh but just by, I've, I've never been over to europe or anything but just, just by the picture it's kind of cool how like everything's kind of interwined it seems like kind of like a maze and i don't know it just has like, shows a lot of character it just seems like it'd be just kind of neat to walk down the streets and just like enjoy the scenery and i don't know the cool old buildings it's like, that was cool, man. Just looking down there, it'd be kind of cool just to live there. Well, at least visit there. I definitely will. Anyways, yeah. ...in contrast to other countries. Even though they only made about 11% of the population of Yugoslavia, they accounted for about a fifth of the GDP and a third of the exports. I mean, right? So when they wanted the independence, it was like, are you sure you want to go out on your own? I mean, it's a scary world out there. Yeah, dad, I, uh, I think I got it covered. Slovenia has been a mini powerhouse in electronics and equipment production. Some domestic brands like these produce everything from light aircrafts to motorcycle exhaust pipes and refrigerators. <laughs> in fact, Slovenia supposedly has the most tractors per capita in the world. Weird fact, but the fact nonetheless. In addition, they are huge on wine. It is said that there is a vineyard for every 70 people in the country and they have the world's oldest vine still producing fruit at around 440 years old. And keep in mind that one vine survived centuries of wars, battles, bombings, and a lot of blowing shit up. Someone give that vine a medal of honor or something. I don't know. Just keep going. Anyways, one other <laughs> national pastime, beekeeping. That's right. Specifically with the native Carniolan honeybee. It is said there is about one beekeeper per 200 people in the country. Honey shops selling honey all over the place and honey flavored foods are everywhere in Slovenia. Honey, honey, honey is their thing. Don't try and take it. And speaking of bees and insects, here's... So basically, uh, you get tourists there. I mean, you guys probably make bang on tourists when it comes to like all that like honey stuff and wine stuff. Like, it's, it's gotta be like anywhere else, right? You got the big tourist spots, but you guys got like, let me know like when, uh, I don't know, where's like the good spots to go where you get like really cheap instead of going gay and like, I feel like, you know, stuff like, I'm not just saying Slovenia, I'm not just saying this, but other places where, you know, it's marked up like 10 times what the price probably would be if you went to like a small shop, you know, just kind of out of the way. And, uh, yeah, I don't know where I was going with this, but I'm pretty sure you guys had that, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry.
Gary Harlow. Gary Harlow here. As a heavily forested country, it's no surprise that Slovenia has incredible biodiversity. There's over 15,000 animal species, 6,000 plants, and 5,000 fungi, one of which is currently on my foot. And about 10% of Slovenia is protected national park, the largest nice. one being the Triglav National Park in the northwest part of the country. You can find some of the 75 mammal species here, like European bees, Beavers, grey wolves, and European otters. Whoa. Do an otter sound. Otter! Otter! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, no. Sounds like honest. Okay. Slovenia actually has one of the highest concentration of brand bears per capita in the world. And one of the most famous horse breeds, the Lipizan, is from here. Originated from the oldest European stud farm. Because they're studs. And of course, every Slovenian will tell you to try and find a baby dragon. At least that's what the locals call orms. Blind aquatic salamanders that thrive in the dark, wet cave systems. That's it for me. Wow, oh, that's cool. And it's done for. <laughs> that was uh, that got dark fast. Okay, Gary Harlow after hours. Thank you, Gary. All right, and with that, it's time to finish off the segment as we always do. <laughs> now, guys, Slovenia has a lot to offer culinary-wise, as they kind of fuse everything from South, mm. Central, and Balkan Europe. Some dishes may include things like meatloaf with hard-boiled egg, mm. scrambled egg soup, and yoda. I know, it sounds like, come here real bad, but it's not. Yota, it's yota. Puccia, repa, carniol in sausage, mm. custard cake, layered strudel cake, and potizza rolls. A lot of potizza. For drinks, they also boast thousands of microbreweries, especially in Kamni. They even have a beer fountain in Jalik. Beer fountain, guys, yeah. you hear me? Nonetheless, the national drink is... I mean, the Baltics definitely know got good food, and they definitely know how to drink. I have a feeling if I went to a, ba a bar over there, you guys would kick my butt. I mean, you'd have me wasted, and you guys would be doing just fine. <laughs> is schnapps. Many people even make their own at home, probably in a tub, who knows. And speaking of a home life, that brings us to the people of Slovenia, which we will discuss in... Cool, Thank you, Ivan. Now, in the words of geography Irina, Slovenia is a Slavic country with its head in Austria and feet in Italy. Years of being subjugated under the Romans, Austro-Hungarians, and the Yugoslavs has shaped and molded this interesting anomaly of a nation that kind of bridges the Slavic, Germanic, and Latin cultures all in one. And it's funny because like they're not the only one of these culturally divergent oddity countries. Like they're they're all over Europe. Most Latins are Catholic, but I'm kind of feeling this Orthodox thing. And I swear I'm Nordic. <laughs> So yeah, Slovenia is not alone. Anyway, here's the graph. Population-wise, Slovenia has a little over 2 million people, and they have the highest GDP nominal and purchasing power parity in the entire Balkan region. The country is predominantly ethnically Slovene at about 83%, and from there the rest are from a slew of other countries, none super prevalent, but the largest one being Serbs and Croats at about 2% right. each. And the rest of the population come from mostly other parts of Europe, like Bosnia and Herzegovina, there's Romani people and Hungarians, and so on. They use the Euro as their okay. currency, they use the text C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side right. of the road. Now, Slovenia's national language is, no shocker, Slovene. It's a Slavic language related to their Balkan cousins like Serbian or Croatian, but it's like way less intelligible and has a lot of weird German twists. In fact, Slovene grammar is way more confusing because not only do they have the singular and plural tenses, but they also have a dual tense to describe pairs of nouns. Here's Geography Kaya explaining. Well, the formal Slovenian language is a unique language because it's truly romantic. It uses the dual a grammatical number in addition to the singular and the plural. For example, in English language you would say dog to one dog and dogs to two dogs or more. And now in Slovene. Pas means one dog, sa means two dogs, and psi means three or more dogs. I will also give an example of verb dilati, which means working, conjugation. Dila means I am working, dilava means we are working, and dilamo means we are working, and so on. It is used for verbs as well as nouns, pronouns, adjectives, except in some dialects. Sometimes it is very confusing even for us Slovenes. I can't imagine how hard it must be for someone who tries to learn it. Thank you, Kaya. No Nonetheless, as a small country with a rare language, the vast majority of people in Slovenia are either bilingual or trilingual with English and German as common second and nice. third languages. The country, in fact, ranked Impressive. at one time having the fourth best education system in Europe and 12th in the world. Faith-wise, like their Croatian
Croatian neighbors, Slovenia is a Catholic-influenced nation. Somewhere around 70% of the country claims to be at least some way affiliated with the church. So yeah, as you can see, Slovenia is quite a cultural anomaly. Nature-loving, Germanified, Catholic-y Slavs. And with so much of the great outdoors surrounding them, they've always been kind of keen on going outside and staying active. Skiing is probably their favorite pastime. In fact, many children learn how to ski in primary school. No athlete is more renowned, though, than gold medalist Tina Matze, who won the women's downhill and giant slalom events in the Sochi Olympics in 2014. Basketball and handball are popular too. They won the Euro Basket gold medal in 2017 and third place in the World Handball Championships in the very same year. Oh shoot, I'm talking about sports. <laughs> Sorry, Art, I took a little bit of your segment. Anyway, here's That's Art cool. finishing off the sports part with Art. Wait, Slovenia and Slovakia are two different places? Oh my gosh, Art. <laughs> Bicycling has also a long-standing tradition in Slovenia. I do, you're gonna get an argument going on. I did. The, I got made that did the wrong thing with the Soviet Union. They got me for it. So, careful what you say, buddy. Oh my gosh! Right. <laughs> Bicycling has also a long-standing tradition in Slovenia, as they have countless paths and roads that are perfect for training. They've actually won two Grand Tours. This guy, who was the first Slovene to win a Grand Tour in 2019, and this guy, who won the Tour in D France in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tour de France. The Tour de France of 2020. I can't even believe it was going on with this whole pandemic and all that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they had one. I guess. I don't. I thought you said Tour de. I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't thinking Tour de France, but yeah, like that didn't even like register to me why they were laughing until until I realized that he meant Tour de France. Wow. 20. I can't even believe it was going on with this whole pandemic and all that. Yeah, I guess, yeah, they had one, I guess. Well, congrats to you, Taj Polkadar. <laughs> <laughs> in the end, though, one sport that is definitely in their element would be mountaineering. That's not a sport, but whatever. Slovenia is considered a mountaineering powerhouse, and anything that has to do with climbing, tackling a mountain, mm -hmm. you can bet a Slovene like these guys will not be far from the elite pack. And speaking of climbing, I love, I love to do, I love, I would love to go hiking and like mountains and stuff like that. But when it comes to what, what, I don't know what it's called, like mountain climbing or wall climbing, we have to go up the side of like a mountain or something. No, thank you. That's where the, my fear of heights takes place. I'll, I'll stand up like, as long as it's like a step kind of thing, you're going up really high. But if I got to scale a wall, ain't no way that's happening. So, yeah. <sighs> You can bet a Slovene like these guys will not be far from the elite pack. And speaking of climbing, I need to climb my way out of here. So I'm gonna, I'm like. That's going down, climbing is up. There's. <laughs> <laughs> Tarchin. Thank you, Art. You're what? so crazy. Slovenians, they've always kind of been like a country that tries to like highlight every little claim they can. They'll even tell you they invented the wheel because the oldest known wheel ever found was in a swamp near the capital. And speaking of claims, Slovenia has a lot of vibrant, colorful tradition. And with that, here's Random Hannah's turn to take a swing at the Woo. batter's box. Guys, it is so good to be back. I have nothing to whine about, and neither do you now, because we have a Random Hannah shirt! Boop, boop, boop. And you can get it at geographynow.com. So Slovenia. Underneath those industrious mountain folk is a people riddled in vivacious backstory. It is said that in order to be a true Slovene, you must climb the highest peak, Trigla, followed by a custom of, well, it goes like this. Wow, we made it to the top of Mount Trigla. This is great, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Come here. That's the tradition. Many people may what? live with their extended family. And Sunday family lunches are very common. When a child is born, there is usually a three day long party that includes a lot of wine drinking and soaking the father in wine because it is supposed to stop the baby from having flat feet. Wait, what? I was like, flat <laughs> feet? Slovenes are proud of their contribution to modern inventions, such as dialysis machines, Hewlett Packard calculators, the photograph, slide frame, the foldable wooden rec chair, and sphere liquid crystal lasers. I had a problem saying oh, everything except for spherical liquid <laughs> crystal lasers. The national costume known as the Narodna Nosha might be worn at special events. You might notice the slight Germanic undertones for the male costumes with mm. leather knee-high boots over yeah. breeches, felt hats, and finally a scarf under the vest. For women, you have the more Slavic looking blouses and petticoats. The most notable part of the costume being the headdress or abva, often with an embroidered headband followed by a poofy white starched bow on the back. 
The bigger, poofier abvas are usually reserved for married women. Literature has always persisted in Slovene culture, with their most famed poet Francis Pescherin and these okay. authors and playwrights who pioneered movements like Slovene modernism, avant-gardeism, and expressionalism. Metropolitan architecture in Slovenia has a unique twist that mixes everything from Vienna secessionist cream-colored neo-baroque exteriors, exteriors to royalist Yugoslav and functionalist Yugoslav complexes. Paul! Someone <laughs> write a letter to Paul and tell him to write his sentences better. I'm the king of run-on sentences. I don't even know what I just said. Speaking of construction, <laughs> Slovenia is one of the few places you can see Klopotek. Tell me if I pronounced that right, guys. Don't let the image fool you. This is not a windmill, but more of a scarecrow that keeps birds away from vineyards with spinning and rattling sounds. Of course, Slovenes love celebration. They have the Lint Festival, the Novi Rock Festival, the Slovene Book Fair. They even have one of Europe's most renowned carnival festivals, lasting 11 days in the town of Petui, and is inscribed in the UNESCO Heritage List. They celebrate Pusht, which is like a Halloween in February, where the character is sentenced to death for causing all the world's problems. That's dramatic. And speaking of all the world's problems, here is Keith with the music <laughs> segment, Buy My Shirt, Not Keith's Shirt. <laughs> You here all here to get educated again. Music of Slovenia. For one, they have one of the world's oldest known instruments, the Neanderthal flute. Made by Barebone, discovered in 1995, <laughs> thought to be about 50,000 years old. Today, they moved on to more refined elements. Traditionally, Slovenian music has been heavily influenced by the Germans, Swiss, and Austrians. They are one of the few Slavic peoples that really love to play the accordion, specifically the Styrian, the oldest kind in the world according to Austria, which, you know, those Austrians, if they're anything like the Germans, they're, you know, smart. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they even have their own styles of polka and waltz. During Italian influence years, many Slovene Renaissance composers like these dudes came into the spotlight. During the Austro-Hungarian Empire years, things got way more Germanified. During the Romantic period, composers like these rose to the top. Uh, nonetheless, they still respect their traditional Slovenian roots and have their own Slovene folk styles. Slavko Avsenik, being probably the most famous musician of Slovenian folk music, he is known for inventing the Oberkrainer country sound that became popular in Slovenia, Germany, Austria. Today, Slovenians indulge in every genre imaginable, just like yeah. every country at this point on the face awesome. of the earth. There was a huge industrial rock movement in the 1980s and the 90s with Leibach and the uh, acapella band Perpetuum Jazil. The best band though that came at least be partially claimed by Slovenia would be Two Cellos, which I believe is Paul's favorite band. Yeah, Luca, love you, man. You're from Slovenia. I had to put this in the episode. Two Cellos. I love that band. He loves them. Anyway, I'm Keith. I'm awesome. Buy a Keith shirt. You know, you get to look like this sexy dude. Anyways, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Keith. And with that, let's just do a very quick rundown on the history of Slovenia. In the quickest way I can summarize it, yeah. the late 6th and 7th century, they had their first kingdom, then Charlemagne kind of took over. Then for like 1400 years, they were part of different German-speaking kingdoms. World War I, they had a short-lived state called the State of Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs. Then the Kingdom of Serbs and Croats and Slovenes. World War II, Yugoslavia, 1991. Independence Please. joins the EU and NATO, joins the European Monetary Union, and those are like the biggest things. I asked you guys, the Slovene geography peeps, to give me a list of all the famous Slovene people you could think of. Here are some of the people you mentioned. There are just so many of them. I'm just gonna put the list on with a montage. Feel free to screenshot this if you want and look these people up. Tarchin, do you wanna be a famous Slovene? Do you? Look at me exploiting animals. Ha! Definitely not below me. And speaking of, uh... I don't know, there's no way to really transition from a dog to friend zone. But anyway, here's friend zone. That's cool. Man's best friend. Oh, how could I miss that? Dog. Man's best friend. Oh. Anyway, as we mentioned many times, Slovenia is kind of like the bridge between the Germanic, Latin, and Slavic peoples. So you'll see those countries generally kind of tie into the mix when it comes to their friends. For one, with Italy, it's kind of like a love little bit of hate relationship. Historically, they're a part of many Italian-based kingdoms and empires and rulers, like the Romans, Byzantines, and the Republic of Venice. And today, they still kind of look at the map and say, really, Trieste, come on, Italy. Nonetheless, there are many Italian and Slovene minority 
parties in each other's countries, and they have amicable relations. When it comes to their Balkan neighbors, Slovenia is basically the uncle that begrudgingly shows up to the South Slavic family reunion only because they are family. And no matter how different you are, you never disavow your family. Out of all the South Slavs, Serbians are the largest minority in Slovenia at about two to three percent of the population, and many have family within each other's countries. There was a little drama when they recognized Kosovo and the rest of the NATO allies back in the day, which created a small sour taste in Serbia's mouth, but nonetheless, they remain close. Croatia has always been a close friend, and Slovenes almost always take a mass migration to their coast for a vacation annually. Of course, there's always a little bit of drama with Croatia as well, considering the unfinished border disputes, and some Slovenians will bring up the historical claims of land that are now in Croatia that they claim were part of Slovenia in the past, but these issues are not detrimental to the overall bilateral diplomacy between these two countries. As a nation that's always kind of been at the crossroads between the three main parts of Europe, joining the Latin world with the Germanic and Slavic, it's no shocker that Slovenia also kind of acts like the nice neutral mediator for larger states. Whenever the EU wants to get involved in anything non-EU Europe country related, Slovenia is usually a good nomination for summit meetings, and not even just between the ah. EU. Back in 2008, they even hosted a meeting between former US President Bush and Vladimir Putin. When it comes to their best friend, however, when it comes to their best friends, however, almost every Slovene I have talked to has in some way, shape, or form mentioned the same country, Austria. It is often said that Slovenes are like Slavic Austrians. They do their best to emulate the Austrian lifestyle. The influence is clearly evident in their social structure. Everything from the accordion playing to the Alpine mountaineering culture, Slovenes are totally crushing on Austrians. Austria acknowledges them and enjoys their company, but usually pays more attention to Switzerland and Germany, which in return only makes Slovenia crazier for their crush, and they do everything from learning German to dancing the waltz just to get their attention. It's cute. Aww. In conclusion, just like Triglav with its triple peaks, Slovenia is kind of like a triple bridge nation that connects the Germanic, Latin, and Slavic worlds. Which is why, no shocker, so many people must be in Slov with Slovenia. Nobody's here to punch me. Oh, they're much better. Anyway, stay tuned. The Solomon Islands is coming up next. It's kind of cool that you guys are the bridge. Like, you kind of get, like, the best of both worlds. But I guess each side, you know, you can't be really each side's best friend because each side of you kind of has, they're all of that one or all of that one. And they're not just half and half, kind of like I speak. You guys, right? Right? Because you're kind of between, like, both sides, right? So that's sucks. what I think is even better, the fact that, you know, you got cultures of both sides. I think that's awesome. The landscape is amazing. The castles are amazing. And I want to get me a dragon, but I don't want to go in a cave. So that kind of sucks. But I'll just sit outside the cave while you guys go and get one for me while I eat some awesome food. But anyways, guys, you guys are amazing. Please hit that like and subscribe button below. Awesome country. And I'm sorry if I, would, if I seem tired. I am tired. <laughs> It's been a long day. I only had a couple hours sleep last night, so I apologize if I seem tired, more tired than normal. But anyways, guys, peace. Catch you guys in future videos. I am out of here. This was definitely fun. And please do every country in the world. Alphabetical order. Stick around. I'd love to have you with me through it, you know, if you're new here. Everything all like good stuff. Anyways, I'm out of here. Peace.